Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are Arizona. Another sunny day in San Diego. We're at Petco Park, where some familiar faces have rejoined the D-backs for this series with the Padres. Cody Ross and Daniel Hudson were back yesterday. Today, it's A.J. Pollock and Chris Owings returning to the big league club. It's the second of a four-game series here in San Diego. The Diamondbacks and the Padres on Fox Sports Arizona. Good evening from Petco Park. Welcome to the broadcast. Steve Berthume, Bob Brindley along the way. The Diamondbacks here this summer getting their third look already at Cuban defector Odrisimer Despagne, a guy who never really gives you the same look anyway and who pitched very well, Bob, his last time out a career-high nine strikeouts against Milwaukee. Yeah, looked real good against the Brewers last time out. This guy can really throw the kitchen sink at you. We're going to get a look at him against the Brewers in that ball game. He'll change arm angles. He'll change his wind up. He'll change everything from pitch to pitch, depending on what he feels like out there on the mound. Now presents a special challenge uh, as you get a look at his delivery in slow motion here. Hides the ball well behind his body. A lot of elbows and kneecaps flying before he ultimately lets that pitch go towards home plate. And we mentioned the different arm angles. The pitch on the far left is a sinking fastball from a very, very low three quarters arm angle. The one in the middle, a little bit of a higher arm angle, throwing a four-seam fastball, a weapon that he's been using a lot more of lately. And on the far right, that low three-quarters arm angle again, this time with a slow breaking ball. So he'll give you a bunch of different looks. It's never an easy at bat against this guy. Their third look at Odrisimer Despagne on the mound for the Diamondbacks tonight. Left-hander Wade Miley, who has pitched a more than well enough, Bob, to win a game in August. Unfortunately, last four starts, 0-2. Yeah, just not getting a lot of offensive support. Uh, if there's one knock on Wade, he's walked quite a few guys recently, but he's also struck out a lot of guys. He's really turned that part of his game around. The slider's been a real good put-away pitch for him lately. Trying to get those bases on balls under control. Ten walks in his last two starts. So it's Despagne and Miley, the Padres, and the D-backs here for you on Fox Sports Arizona. When we come back, the boys are back in town. A.J. Pollock and Chris Owings. They were winning in Reno over the weekend, and now they are here with the Diamondbacks. Fran has more on that when we come back from San Diego.
by CenturyLink, your link to watch next. And by Jack in the Box. If the D-backs hit a home run today, score a free Jumbo Jack tomorrow with a purchase of a large drink. A gorgeous night for baseball in downtown Phoenix. Welcome back to Fox Sports Arizona. D-backs and Padres game two of their four-game series here at Petco Park. Yesterday, the D-backs expanded their roster as they brought back Daniel Hudson and Cody Ross. Today, they added two more players, a guy, a couple of guys who helped the Reno Aces win yesterday against Sacramento, A.J. Pollock and Chris Owings. Those guys are thrilled to be back here with the big club. It's uh, been a process, obviously, and, uh, you know, it took a lot longer than I thought it was going to, but, um, you know, doing all that stuff makes it worth it being back. That excitement, just like it's opening day again. Um, you know, you go away from the game for a while, and you know when you're in it, you're you're playing every day, and you know, you're going through all the stuff, and um, and then when you you know you get taken away from the game, it really really uh, makes you appreciate it, and really gets you uh, that same uh, enthusiasm you had um, for the game you love. It comes back. A long journey back, but great to have them back. Both were having very, very good seasons before injuries sidelined them. Owens with the shoulder and A.J. Pollock with that fractured right hand. 316 before he won on the DL. And Owens not in the lineup tonight, but A.J. Pollock is. So he'll get some time in center field. Looks like Chris Owens will get some time at second base the rest of the season. Stick around. Going to be a great game here at Petco Park. Wade Miley on the hill up to get the D-backs road trip off and running. The lefty on the hill looking for his first win since the end of July. Steve and Bob have the call next, right here on Fox Sports Arizona. Black San Diego Padres this year. D backs have won all four of the series between these two this season. And we'll play the Padres once more this year. Three games at Chase Field starting a week from Friday. But three more here before this series is done at Petco Park in San Diego. Steve Berthune, Bob Brindley, Brad Stocky with you as the San Diego Padres take the field. And on the mound, the Cuban defector. Odrisson Air Despagne, just 12 starts in his major league career. He won his first two, including a victory over the D-backs here at Petco Park. But the D-backs beat Despagne less than two weeks ago at Chase Field. He's 3-5 on the year, a 3 2 4 ERA. For a scouting report, here's a guy that's watched a lot of tape on Odrisson Air Despagne. It's A.J. Pollock back with the big club tonight. Here's A.J. Watched him pitch right before I went to Reno, and he's uh, he's impressive. He's got a bunch of pitches working for him. Uh, seems to keep pit, uh, hitters off balance, and um, yeah, we're up for a good challenge. But I think we just gotta stay strong and put some put some good at bats on him, and make him feel uncomfortable. 
Odrisa Mayor Despagne pitched well his previous time out last Wednesday against Milwaukee here. Got a no decision, but gave up just one earned run on six hits and seven and had nine strikeouts. And according to his skipper, Bud Black, he got back to the basics. Uh, as we mentioned in the open, he'll change arm angles. He'll change speeds on all of his pitches. At times, it looks like he has a dozen different pitches out there on the mound. But that start against the Brewers, he really got back to using his fastball, both the four-seamer and the two-seamer, attacking the strike zone with the fastball. He's been around enough, and you heard A.J. Pollock talk about it. He changes arm angles, changes speeds, and uh, to change that up a little bit to make an adjustment, he's been throwing more fastballs lately. We'll keep an eye on that tonight. d 8 and 5 against the Padres this year, including a 4-3 and three record here at Petco Park. And it's a much stronger bench down there. Great to see A.J. Pollock and Chris Owings back here. And we anticipate that we might see Daniel Hudson pitch his first major league game in over two years at some point in this ball game. He's back there in the Diamondback bullpen. Strike one to Ender in Ciarte and left field tonight with Pollock back in center. Ender 270 on the year and three homers. This is the lineup for Kirk Gibson's Diamondbacks. Good to have A.J. back in there. Yeah, and with A.J. back in there, notice Ender Inciarte playing left field tonight. Cliff Pennington at second. David Peralta out in right field. Mark Trumbo at first base. Miguel Montero doing the catching. A.J. Pollock out in center field. It'll be Jake Lamb at third base. D.D. Gregorius at short and Wade Miley on the mound for the Diamondbacks. Wade went winless in August. He has pitched very well. They have not scored any runs for him, but he's got to get those walks under control. A six-walk game and a four-walk game is last start. On the ground to first, right to Yasmani Grandal, who takes it himself. Quickly one down. This is what the Padres look like defensively behind Odris and Aaron Despagne. Outfield will be Almonte, Maben, and Liriano left to right. Left side of the infield is Solarte and Amarista. The right side is Jerko and Grandal doing the catching. Rene Rivera and Odris and Despagne on the mound for the Padres. Cameron Maben has been a problem for the Diamondbacks so offensively all year long, getting the start in center field against the left-hander Miley. Cliff Pennington, the second baseman tonight, a night off for Aaron Hill. He looks at strike one. Doug Eddings is our plate umpire. 259, couple of home runs for Cliff. Pennington, three hits in his last 24 at bats. The offensive pace has slowed a bit since he came off the DL. Kept him out virtually all of June and July. What a season it's been for injuries. But it's good to have some of these guys starting to get back to it. Cody Ross and Daniel Hudson yesterday. A.J. Pollock, Chris Owings today. So a night off for Aaron Hill. A lot of options for Kirk Gibson down in that D-back dugout. It's going to be tricky in September juggling all these guys, trying to get everybody there at bats. This is a bouncer right to Jed Jerko. Nice belt high hop for him. Two down. David Peralta now. You see Despagne has that cap slightly ajar a la Fernando Rodney. It is Trey Sheik. Uh, ran into Wade Miley on the streets this afternoon on his way back to the team hotel. I asked him, how do you hit the Despagne? I always ask the pitchers, how do you hit this guy tonight? Just to get him off track a little bit. And AJ said, I know he wears his hat sideways. So <laughs> seemed like it uh, it got underneath uh, Wade's skin just a little bit. See that more and more now. What would Frank Robinson uh, have said if you walked out there with a hat like that when you were playing for Frank? Now that's disrespecting the, the uniform, you know. It's called a uniform for a reason. Everybody wears the same thing the same way. Uniform. A uniform look, if you will. Yeah. And certainly, you know, guys with the socks nowadays, a lot of guys wear their pants right down on the shoe top. Some guys like Cameron Maben tonight going old school with the high stirrups and the sanitary socks. How about that, huh? Do you have to let some of that stuff go these days if you're going to manage in the big leagues in 2014? I think you do. I mean, I, I'm not real partial to the hat on sideways myself, but, uh, you know, 
he thinks it helps him in some way, shape, or form, and he performs up to the level you expect him to perform, then uh, eh, what's the big deal? I know it is motivation for some guys because it does really get under some guy's skin. And I was that way at one time, not so much anymore. As Monty Grandal throws it away. They've got a catcher playing first base, remember, and Peralta's aboard. Grandal with the injury to Yonder Alonso and the underperformance of Tommy Medica and some of the other guys in the Padres lineup has played a lot of first base lately. He has looked more comfortable over there, but this is still a tough play. Yeah, this is a test for even a, a regular first baseman, kind of going away from your target, trying to hit that pitcher on the run as he approaches that base. A lot of things happening right there, especially for a guy that hasn't played the position very much. So it's E3. Osmani Grandal's error has put Peralta at first with two down for Mark Trumbo. Mark at 238, eight home runs. One for four in the ball game yesterday here at Petco Park. Another beautiful day in San Diego today. Getting a little cool now. It's about that time of year where things cool off here at night. Seventy-three degrees. Doug Eddings back there. How about this throw? Yeah, Grandall's not the only one having trouble hitting the pitcher. <laughs> just a little bit too much on that fastball from Doug Eddings. Got another one ready just in case. Must have been the hat. <laughs> Doug lost his alignment there. He, he threw it where he thought Despagne was looking. <laughs> Which apparently is <laughs> in the Padre dugout. <laughs> so, Dries the mayor Despagne. 27 year old right hander. He backs beat to spawn a less than two weeks ago at Chase Field. Almost threw that one at the backstop two and two now and you see the velocities from Despagne in the low 90s. We're told he's hit 95 a couple of times especially in that last outing against Milwaukee. He didn't come close to that uh, the first couple times the Diamondbacks saw him. His fastball was 88 to 90 and relied on changing speeds and moving the ball around and that arm angle change we've talked about. Throwing a little harder now. They got Peralta hung up. He was going on first move and he's picked off. David Peralta got happy feet down there. A little jumpy and Despagne had him dead to rights and that's the inning. There goes David. He takes off. Despagne steps off, and that's the top of the first at Petco Park.
Park in San Diego set for the home half of the first inning. And your Arizona Ford starting pitcher for the Diamondbacks tonight is left-hander Wade Miley. His 29th start, he's looking for his first win since July 30th. The command has not been there lately. Six walks, two starts ago in Washington. And Wade walked four his last time out against the Dodgers. Here's Miguel Montero behind the plate tonight. I think he's still kind of trying to nibble a little bit. So when he when he gets to to that habit, he start nibbling and trying to be too fine on pitches. That's when he gets in trouble. And uh, he's actually effectively when he goes and attack the strike zone and he goes after and he's not worried about you know make a perfect pitch every time. And you know that's that's when he actually is pretty good when you just go after the hitters. And Harvey Salarte flies out to David Peralta in right field. Quickly one down here in the San Diego first. Miley. Previous two seasons had an ERA right at or under three and a half. Well, it's up to 4-3-0 this year. And the home run ball's been a problem, too. He's already given up a career-high 23 homers. And you mentioned the walks. Uh, it, that start against Washington, so unusual. He went six and two-thirds, gave up eight hits and six walks, and did not allow a run. Fourteen base runners in six innings of work, and uh, not one national got on the plate against him. He had three double play balls mm -hmm. behind him in that game. He has become more and more over the course of this year a very effective ground ball pitcher. And here is the left fielder tonight, Abraham Almonte. 289, two homers. He's hit 236 since he came over to the Padres from the Seattle Mariners. think about double plays normally you think about a sinker a two seam sinking fastball to get those ground balls that you need in a double play situation but for Miley I think it's more his slider he's got better tilt on his slider as the season has progressed there were some starts earlier this year where it was a very flat breaking ball working laterally across the zone he's got a lot of downward movement on that pitch now and can get ground balls with it. We talked about the bases on balls and two batters in he's walked Al Monte to bring up Jed Jerko. Wade Miley more than 60% fastballs up there 91 to 92 generally split between the four seamer and the two seam sinking fastball he's thrown that slider more often this year 25% of the time in fact that's up 10% over last year. And they have El Monte <laughs> picked off. Wade Miley returns the favor two down. Monte was getting ready to go into his secondary lead. Wade Miley snapped the throw over there to Mark Trumbo. They had him out by a mile. Strike one to Jed Jerko. Up there now with two down and the bases empty after Peralta was picked off first to end the top of the first inning. Oh. Whoops. <laughs> Jericho bangs that into left for a two out single. We had a two hit game yesterday that snapped a two for 25 skid and he's on board here to open up this ball game. This is the lineup for Bud Black San Diego Padres against the left hander Wade Miley. So Larte Almonte and Jerko at the top. It'll be Grandal Rivera who's been hot over his last 10 games and Liriano in the middle Cameron Maben Alexi Amarista and Odrisimer Despagne make up the bottom of the order. Nailed it. You notice I didn't give the first names for some of them. Yasmani <laughs> Grandal. Grandal, a couple of hits yesterday. He scored a run, 2 11 on the year. You see those 11 homers. He's got some real power in that bat. Although all of it comes from the other side of the plate, he's a switch hitter and much better from the left hand side. All 11 home runs. He's had four, in fact, since the All-Star break. Right side, different story. He struggles. We were talking about switch hitters, and what's the real benefit of being a switch hitter if you hit 100 from one side of the plate or the other? 
Well, thinking back to Willie McGee, who played with the San Francisco Giants at the tail end of his career when I was coaching there. He's ripped into left field. We'll get into that a little more next half. Then. And they're in Ciarte. That one almost carried over Ender's head out there in left field, but that's the inning through one no score in San Diego. device and visit your local Circle K for details. The purchase of a 20 ounce Pepsi, you can win tickets to Super Bowl 49 in Arizona this February. Some D-backs fans here with us in San Diego. On a lovely but slightly cool Tuesday night, Diamondbacks and Padres no score as we start the second inning. Audrey Mayor Despagne on the mound and Rene Rivera behind the plate. These two have worked very well together. And Despagne, just one of the many pitchers that enjoys throwing to Rene Rivera. In fact, Rivera, 68 games back there catching this year. In those games with Rivera behind the plate, Padres pitchers have put up a 2.78 ERA. That's the best catcher's ERA in the major leagues. That's better than having a good agent, having your pitching staff uh, singing your praises. <laughs> Really taken over back there. Remember, they had three catchers for a while. They traded Nick Hundley. And Grandal, with all the injuries, has played mostly first base lately. Mark Trombo gives that a ride down the left field line, but foul just missed it. Mark Trombo, a 20 game home run drought now. His last homer, August 9th, against the Rockies at Chase, and he almost put that one. Into the Western Metal Supply Company building. Just got out in front of that slow breaking ball a little bit. Uh, Despania will change speeds on all of his pitches, but especially that breaking ball. He'll throw a hard curve ball, he'll throw a hard slider, and then he'll take something off of both of those pitches. Along the right field line, Grandal near the seats, but it's out of play. We were talking about switch hitters, and I mentioned Willie McGee, who you look at his numbers, he didn't have much problem from either side of the plate. Was a 297 hitter as a lefty, a 289 hitter as a right handed hitter, but all of his pop was from the right side of the plate. In less than half as many at bats, he had more home runs as a right handed hitter. But talking to Willie, he said he never felt like he had both sides of the plate going at the same time. Yeah, I would think that's an issue. Yeah, for a week or so, he would feel really good from the right side of the plate, and the left side would just kind of disappear on him. And then it would completely switch around, and he'd feel really good left-handed, and the right side would go away. But you look at his career numbers. It didn't happen very often. Rumbo knocks that into center for a base hit to lead off the second. I just saw Jan Hervey Salarte, the third baseman they got from the Yankees. He's a switch hitter, as is El Monte and Grandal. A lot of them here. Bud Black loves versatility. Both offensively and defensively. 
And we can recall some games in the past here against the Padres when he used about eight different guys in the outfield. <laughs> Every time he made a pitching change, he'd bring in a new outfielder. Move him around. He'd play all three spots in one game. Yeah, Denorfi used to play all three spots. Will Venable would play two or three spots in a game. Miguel Montero, 256, 13 home runs. Lead off man aboard for the D backs in the second. That's a swing we've seen a little too much from uh, lately from Miggy. You know, and this is that time of year, especially for guys that have been playing regularly like Miguel Montero and more recently Rene Rivera, and they were out there getting ready to warm up the starting pitcher and probably comparing bruises. Yeah, well, my elbow hurts. Well, I took one off the toe last night. Guys comparing scars from surgeries. <laughs> oh, they'll get those eventually, too. Yeah, catchers are probably the only players, I guess pitchers as well, that have their orthopedic surgeon on speed dial. <laughs> hey, can you see me tomorrow morning at 6 o'clock? I have my knee swelled up. I don't know what's going on in there. Cindy Brunson was in the D backs locker room the other day, and Miggy, both knees were swollen up like footballs, and they were covered in ice. And she said, My goodness, what's wrong with your knees? And Miggy just said, Oh, they're always like that. <laughs> Nothing, they're fine. <laughs> yeah, and you're always looking for some kind of an edge, you know. Uh, Several years ago, they came out with those things they call knee savers. Uh, Rivera wears them on the back of his shin guards. Uh, so when you get into that crouch, you can take some of the stress off of the knee joint by sitting on those pads that rest on the back of your calves. And uh, well, I remember when those first came out, it was like a novelty. Every cat, have you tried them yet? <laughs> Do they work? <laughs> a little flare out to the left. Here comes El Monte, tracks it down. Rumble back to first, one away. And a little cushions right on the back of the calves where they just kind of sit. Yeah, they may actually be talking about those uh, knee savers. You can see him, he's got them. Rivera has them on the back of his legs right there. And there they are. Mm -hmm. Well, here's A.J. Pollock, a sight for sore eyes and calves. <laughs> back for the first time in three months. He missed all of June, July, and August. His first at bat in the big league since May 31st. He was hit on that right hand by a fastball from the Reds Johnny Cueto May 31 surgery on the right hand. A plate and some screws inserted by Dr. Sheridan the bone was fractured kind of upward is how Kirk Gibson put it so they needed to. Pull it get some traction straighten it out. And at the time he was hit he was among the hottest players in baseball. Such a, a shame. Yeah, to see that progress stalled. Yeah, the groundswell for him going to Minnesota to the All Star game was really starting to build. He was putting up numbers and then this. Oh, man. I mean, in the 39 games before that injury, AJ was hitting 359 and slugging over 650. And if those aren't All Star numbers, I don't know what is. And he was told when it was initially diagnosed that you'd be out five weeks to two months. It's been three. He would have uh, been back from that right hand fracture earlier than this, but in his first rehab game, July 31st, sure enough, sure enough, hit on the same hand again. You're kidding me. On the ground a second, Jerko Amarista. Nice job there by big Mark Trumbo to break up that double play ball. They get the out at second, but Pollock's aboard at first. Here comes Mark Trumbo bearing in on you at 6'4", 235, and little Alexi Amarista. Yeah, I'm not so sure they would have been able to turn that with A.J. Pollock's speed, but Mark Trumbo made sure. Goes in there hard and clean. As that sliding runner at second base, you just have to be able to touch the base with some body part, your foot, your hand, your helmet, whatever. Something has to be within range of that base, and Mark Trumbo went right after the shortstop that time and disrupted his throw to first. So A.J.'s on first with two down now for Jake Lamb.
Ball one to Lamb, who's in there at 194 on the year. A couple of home runs, including that grand slam. But a tough day yesterday. 0 for 4 with four strikeouts. Boy, those that six and seven spot in the lineup for the Diamondbacks last night. That was poison. Lamb struck out four times, and Nolan Reimold hitting in the seventh spot struck out four times. Back to back golden mm -hmm. sombreros. This is a lot to overcome in your lineup. In fact, Jake now in the big league so far this year has struck out 25 times in 62 at bats. Trying to get comfortable up there. And we've seen him jump at some fastballs that were elevated and outside the strike zone, but he's also appeared to swing and miss at some very hittable pitches. This is kind of in between, as Bob said not too long ago. Trying to make some adjustments and shorten up a bit. A little quicker to the ball, he says. Yeah, which is what he talked about on Snake Talk after hitting his grand slam. He had struck out twice earlier in the ball game on mid-80s fastballs right in the middle of the plate, so he decided he was just going to try to be really quick, shorten everything up, get the barrel of the bat on the ball, and let it go where it may, and in that case, it went out of the ballpark. Well, he says he would like to get to a place where he can eliminate a hitch, a little waggle in the bat that he's got. Get a shorter swing that doesn't get affected by a hitch that interferes with the timing and create a, a slower swing. It's, waggle's probably a better word. He called it a hitch. Just right there, just kind of waggling around, but he puts a good swing on that one off the glove of Grandal. Jerko's there to back up, and they get Lamb at first. Bottom two coming up, no score at Petco Park. Day for the Reno Aces in a basically a win or go home situation against Sacramento. Nick Ahmed with the base hit. Top of the 10th inning drives in the go ahead run to make a 2 1 Reno Aces. And then Chris Owings gets the 4 6 3 double play to wrap up the win. So that means they are moving on to the PCL semifinals against Las Vegas. And Stephen Bob, pretty amazing season for all the D back minor league affiliates. Five teams advancing to the postseason, four of their full season teams moving on. Their overall minor league record this year, the best in franchise history, and that obviously bodes well for the future. Sure does, Brad. Renee Rivera leads off the bottom of the second. He bangs that into left for a single. Now you've got Reno in the postseason, Mobile in the postseason, Visalia will play playoff baseball, and in single A, you've got South Bend and short season Hillsboro. All in the playoffs led by the Triple A ball club. Well, and I, I think that's just tremendous for the organization and for the players within the organization to learn how to win. I mean, it's it's tough to grind out a minor league season. We've talked about it before. You play in front of very few fans for very little money, and uh, you know to grind through the entire summer and then find yourself in the postseason. The excitement is ratcheted back up once again. 
Learn what it takes to get through a long season and come out on top. Reimer Liriano takes strike one, the 23 year old rookie. 196 on the year, just 18 games in the big league so far, 14 starts. Bounced over the mound, D.D. Gregorius will step on second himself and turn a pretty double play. How about the footwork there by the Diamondback shortstop? Could have tried the little underhand toss to Cliff Pennington, but look at his feet. Wow, quickness. Oh, talk about making adjustments as a hitter or a pitcher, but uh, D.D. as a defender makes adjustments on the fly. Great body control, great quick feet out there at shortstop. I mean, this is not something you practice. You just react to what happens in the play. And D.D. that time, a couple of shuffle steps to his left and fires on to first to complete the double play. And Liriano is a guy that runs pretty well. Getting up that line. First pitch swung on by Cameron Maba. Now Cliff Pennington gets a chance, and he throws him out. Couple of ground balls there from Miley. A five-pitch second inning, and we are scoreless at Petco Park. Final season, there it is, of Sons of Anarchy, premiering Tuesday, September 9th, only on FX. Well, Grisa Mayor Despagne back out there for the third inning, no score so far. D backs and Padres, second of a four game series from Petco Park here in San Diego. And Edi Gregorius leads off the third. DD 209 and six homers. Hey fans, anytime the D-backs score six runs or more, Taco Bell is giving away three free tacos with the purchase of a large drink between four and six the following day at participating locations. Maybe some fish tacos here in San Diego. That's well hit, but on one hop right to Jen Jerko at second. It was moving. One and uh, down here in the third. Balls for both pitchers here in the early going. Well, Despagne beat the D backs 2 1 on June 29 here at Petco Park. That was just his second big league start. He walked four in the ball game, but allowed just one run on five hits, went six and two third, and got the win. Diamondbacks faced him again about two weeks ago at Chase Field and beat Despagne. Gave up four runs on five hits in five innings. There's strike one to Wade Miley.
Broken bat hopper off the mound. Amarista behind the bag at second. Two down. Another ground ball out right there. That's five ground ball outs so far for Despania. Brings up the leadoff man, Ender in Ciarte. Ender has made 51 starts in the leadoff spot for the D-backs this year. Keep in mind, he's still just a 23-year-old rookie. And just as the leadoff hitter this year, he's hit 291. One base percentage at 330. That's after he spent most of his time hitting eighth in the batting order when he was first called up from Reno. So if you're the leadoff guy with a 291 average and on-base percentage of 330. That's pretty close to getting it done at the big league level. Well, especially since he's learning on the fly. You get the feeling that uh, come next season, if indeed he's at the top of the order once again next year, he will really have uh, learned from his experience. And how about this? Trying to get the bunt by the pitcher. Couldn't quite do it, and Despagne makes a nice play to get in Ciarte. A seven-pitch inning for Odrisimir Despagne. We will go to the bottom of the third at Petco. Still no score. Second, Nodrisimir Despagne responded with a seven pitch third. And now here come the Padres in the home half here at Petco Park. Ender in Ciarte with A.J. Pollock back in left field tonight. That means a, the occasional powwow with Dave McKay. Yeah, the tutoring continues. And there are differences uh, in, in the three outfield positions, obviously, depending on a right handed batter, left handed batter, the ball's going to slice or hook differently. And, the background that you're looking up into behind home plate, it's all uh, completely different. Uh, and any outfield instructor or any outfielder for that matter will tell you it's much easier to play center field because you can see where the ball is in relation to the plate. Is it inside? Is it outside? Is it up? Is it down? Gives you a little bit of a head start getting a jump on a ball hit your direction. Obviously, you don't have that luxury at the corner outfield spots. You can see Dave moving Ender and Ciarte around out there in left field. Dave McKay, the outfield coach, he's responsible for the defensive positioning of the outfielders. And there's a lot of communication, which is great to see. You're good right there. Despagne. for 17 in his career and quickly 0 and 2 judging from that swing I think you can put all three <laughs> outfielders in right I mentioned it last night some some pitchers do a nice impersonation of a hitter others are hitters but Despagne is not even trying now what makes you say that <laughs> you, you just tell by his body language <laughs> just throw three of them up here let me get this out of the way 
I think we've seen Vidal Nuno close his eyes when he throws. I think uh, Despagne closes <laughs> his eyes when he swings. <laughs> Get Nuno pitching against Despagne, nobody would know what happened. <laughs> Blindfold both of them. <laughs> you know, and Hervey Salarte. There's the strike. 34 games with the Padres since his acquisition from the Yankees in the Chase Headley deal. He's at 271 with San Diego, including three homers. Done a nice job for him. Plays a little bit of everywhere, mostly at third base. I mean, these guys with Yasmani Grandal and you know, on Hervey Salarte and Andres Amer Despagne, it's a workout. A test for the PA announcers at the various ballparks around the major leagues. Wade Miley gets the strikeout, back-to-back -back strikeouts, and the third through three, no score in San Diego. On Saturday, September 27th, it's Hispanic Heritage Day presented by Budweiser. Come early, there's a pregame street festival presented by APS. And then the first 20,000 fans into Chase Field get a David Peralta Los D-backs t-shirt courtesy of Gila River Casinos. Be sure to stick around after that game for the concert featuring Grammy-nominated Latin pop star Christian Castro. For more information and to purchase your tickets, visit dbacks.com today. Cliff Pennington leads off the fourth against Odris Amir Despagne. And, uh, you can't get much more efficient than Despagne and Miley have been here lately. Wade Miley worked a five-pitch bottom of the second. Despagne answered with a seven-pitch top of the third. Miley a nine-pitch bottom of the third. These guys are moving along. Well, even though Wade Miley's had some issues uh, walking guys recently, uh, he's got a reputation as a strike thrower. Same thing for Despagne. When you get two pitchers on the mound that are notorious for jumping ahead in the count, offensively you try to short-circuit that by being aggressive and swinging at those early strikes. But if they're quality strikes, you get some quick outs. This one's got a chance to get by Jerko, and it does. A base hit into right for Cliff Pennington. Leadoff man aboard in the fourth. Brings up David Peralta. Second hit for the Diamondbacks. Peralta on base twice yesterday. He walked, singled, and scored a run. He's hit safely in four straight in 13 of his last 15 games. Looks at strike one. And Peralta has been a problem for the Padres this year. 8 for 23 versus San Diego this season. 
That's about a 350 average. got picked off first base by Despagne. Hey, you see him breaking early. He ends up about 20 and a half feet off the bag at first. Despagne, even with the off balance awkward throw back to Grand Hall, still gets it there in plenty of time to get Peralta. He just got caught out in no man's land. 50 pitches, 35 for strikes. There's ball one to Peralta. It's going to happen occasionally, I guess, when you're looking to be aggressive out there. And occasionally, in the process of doing your video work, watching an opposing pitcher, you pick up something in his delivery out of the stretch, and you think, I, I can get a jump. If I see him do this, I'm going to go ahead and break for second base. And on that particular pitch, whatever it was, Peralta saw, Despagne uh, short circuited the whole thing. I just saw Cliff Pennington break for second on that pitch before he stopped. Bluffing down there and a long look with Dave McKay right on his shoulder there. And we've told you that Dave says he always stands in the exact same spot every time to get a very similar look at every pitcher. So he's always getting the same look at the guy's move. He will plant himself right in that same spot. Two and two now. I think back to Rick Sutcliffe in his days pitching for the Chicago Cubs. If you were the runner at first base and Sut was standing on the mound getting his sign from the catcher and was holding the ball in his bare hand, mm -hmm. he was going to snap a throw to first while he was on his way up. He wouldn't come up to a set position. Only if he had the ball in his hand. If the ball was in his glove, he was going to come all the way up into the set position and probably deliver the ball to home. So that's one of the things you look for as a base runner. If he had the ball in his bare hand, yeah, shorten up your lead. He's coming over here. If he had the ball in his glove, you could take a little bit more of an aggressive lead and be ready to break for second. Less likely to throw over if he started his stretch with the ball in the glove. This has popped up, foul ground, third base side. And it's off Rivera's glove and into the Diamondback dugout. Did he have let Despania maybe have that one? Yeah. Or I mean, uh, yeah, Solarte. Solarte looked like he had a better angle on the ball, but Solarte kind of gave up on it right there. Went into that slide way early, uh, kind of indicating to Rivera that you can take it. I'm not going to get there in time. And Rivera played it off his chest protector, it looked like, trying to trap it up against his body and bounces away harmlessly. No play, no error on the play. Right off the shoulder, so 2-2 two, two to Peralta. And now it's full. Pennington takes off for second. Peralta slaps that one foul. It's helpful to know that the shortstop uh, Amarista was covering second base on the steal attempt on that last pitch. Pennington takes off again. Peralta fists it into center field and Cliff heads for third. Diamondbacks have runners on the corners to open up the fourth. Takes it right back up the middle of the field. Little backdoor cutter that time. Stays on it. Hits it over the head of Jerko on into center field. And Cliff Pennington saw the ball off the bat. Got a good read and ends up at third base. Nine pitch at bat right there for David Peralta results in a single that sends Pennington to third. And with nobody out, we'll get another look at Mark Trumbo, who singled his first time. Just missed a home run in that first at bat of the ball game. Got a hanging breaking ball and hooked it foul down there by the Western Metal Supply Company building. We're going to miss by Trumbo. Cameron Mabin, the center fielder, the very back of your picture there. You can see the opposing teams continue to play Trumbo with the center fielder shaded over toward right center field. 
because that's well, for the last month or so basically where Mark hits the ball every time. I think that's because that's where they pitch him every time. Rarely do they make any kind of a mistake from the middle of the plate in where Trumbo could possibly pull the ball out of the ballpark. So he's been content to take his base hits up the middle in the opposite way. Back to back breaking balls on that outer third sweeping off the plate away. It's a pretty even distribution of hits for Mark Trumbo. Fastball right there. AJ Pollock, uh, you know, he's been gone for three months. Doesn't usually hit sixth in the order, so a little confusion. Oh, you're not up now, AJ. <laughs> Get back here. <laughs> to tie a rope around him. What do you mean it's not my turn? He's got three months of baseball to make up for. He wants to hit every inning. <laughs> He did such a good job as the leadoff man for that long stretch before he got injured. So sixth in the order is a new and unfamiliar territory, but he's planted right next to hitting coach Turner Ward there. Two balls and two strikes on Mark Trumbo with Pennington the runner at third David Peralta at first. Espanye misses inside and it's full. Doug well, Eddings not biting there. Well, Rivera made that look a lot better than it was. Watch as he receives that ball. He's just ever so slightly cheating that glove back toward the inside corner. That's that pitch framing we were talking about that makes Rivera so good back there. Just does get a piece to stay alive. Boy, Despagne, he's a kitchen sink guy, as Bob mentioned. He spins and whirls around. There's a leg kick, comes at you with all those arm slots. Not a hard thrower. Got three kinds of fastballs. He's got some off speed and breaking stuff, a curveball, a changeup. He just kind of mixes them in here and there. He's also got a really slow curveball. He'll throw somewhere in the mid 60s on the radar gun. You'll see that. From time to time. And a slider that he'll throw only a handful of times over the course of the ball game. Bounces that one over the head of Glenn Sherlock at third. Yeah, at times he reminds you a little bit of Levon Hernandez in his prime. Mm -hmm. Levon was a guy that would add and subtract and throw the big Ephus curveball up there from time to time. He's got two seam sinkers and cutters. The four seam are all usually 88 to 92, and he mixes in the breaking stuff just enough to have you thinking about it. And all those pitches from arm, those uh, all those different arm angles, high three quarter, low three quarter, even sidearm sometimes gives them 12 to 15 pitches out there. on an off speed pitch and strikes out one down. All three swings and misses in that sequence came on similar pitches start on the outer third of the plate sweep off of that outside corner low and away. Not only the break on the pitch taking it off the plate away but he took a lot off of that breaking ball got Trumbo way out in front. Miguel Montero now he flied out his first time. A two hit day for Miggy yesterday a couple of singles he drove in the D backs only run. Not all tied up there it's a strength. Hey fans when the D backs win you win at Papa John's a day after every Diamondbacks win you get 50% off your regular menu price online order at Papa John's enter promo code D backs 50 at Papa John's dot com.
Miggy now with a 10 game hitting streak against the Padres. He's hit nearly 360 versus San Diego this season, including three home runs. He's got 11 RBIs in 13 games versus the Padres this year. And he's homered twice in this ballpark this season. Here's the numbers on Miggy. Flair out to shallow right center. Maven won't get there. It's going to score Pennington from third, and the Diamondbacks have a 1 0 lead. There's another RBI against the Padres for Miguel Montero. Hit them where they ain't. Full swing from Miguel Montero got jammed a little bit. Maven freezes momentarily out there in center field, and by the time he recovers, he can't catch up to it. Diamondbacks are on the board. Three hits in the inning for the D-backs. So Adris Amir Despagne is laboring here in the fourth. The 25th pitch of this inning coming up to A.J. Pollock. He reached on a fielder's choice his first time up. AJ back today for the first time in three months. And on the right hand by that Johnny Cueto fastball, May 31st. Pollock and Chris Owings activated today. They are both here after Cody Ross and Daniel Hudson rejoined the ball club yesterday. Bouncer over the mound. Amarista, Jerko, the bare hand turn, and Pollock with that good speed beats it out. They get the force on Montero at second. Peralta's in at third. And AJ's awarded first. Bud Black not happy with that call by first base umpire Corey Blazer. And Jerko with the barehanded attempt out there at second base. Yeah, that's not even close. Good to have AJ back for a lot of reasons, but the, that speed. He was starting to steal some bases in big situations, able to leg out infield hits or beat that relay throw on a potential double play and continue the inning, give the guy behind him an opportunity to do something at the plate. In this case, it's Jake Lamb grounded out his first time. Take a look at Miguel Montero's bat on Fox Sports Phantom Cam. He mishits it just enough. Look at that vibration. Boy, you feel that up your arms, all the way into your torso. But when it results in an RBI base hit, you don't really feel it at all. <laughs> One, two. To possibly try to steal a run right here. You've got good speed on the bases with Pollock at first, Peralta over at third base. Two strikes on Jake Lamb. Uh, you never concede in at bat, but it's tough to come back from an 0-2 hole and make something happen. So they might send AJ on down to second base, have him hold up if the throw goes through to second, and see if David Peralta can't sneak down that third baseline, steal a run. AJ was eight for nine in his stolen base attempts before the injury. Holds. It's ball two to Jake Lamb. Two and two now. Spine really throwing a lot of pitches here now. 30 in this fourth inning. After a seven pitch third. Swing and a miss. 
this another strikeout they strand two but they get one Miguel Montero who's been a thorn in the Padres side all season long drives in the first run it's one nothing D-backs. and 15 D-back season tickets are on sale right now. You can guarantee the best seats for the lowest prices when you become a D-back season ticket holder. You'll also enjoy unique benefits, access to exclusive special events, flexible 12-month payment plans, and a whole lot more. More information online for you right now, dbacks.com slash tickets. They lead this one here in San Diego, 1-0 as Abraham Almonte. Leads off the fourth against Wade Miley. There's his strike. Almonte walked his first time up. Well, that shutdown inning is always big after your team scores a run for you. Go out there and quickly get three outs, but especially after the extended inning that Despagne had. He threw a boatload of pitches out there. Try to get him back out to the mound as quickly as possible. Don't give him a lot of time to recover in that first base dugout. Another ground ball against Miley here. Long throw by Didi. What an arm he's got. Almonte, good speed. Wade Miley has had some tough luck lately. He's allowed a total of only seven earned runs in his last four starts. But he's also walked 13 batters over that span. But even with all those bases on balls, he's been able to limit the damage. You see the ERA right there, just under two and a half over the last four starts. And strike one to Jen Jerko, who singled his first time up. The thing about Miley's last month is the run support. It's just not been there. Last four games, Wade has started all D-backs losses. And the final scores in those ball games have been 5-3, 2-1, 1-0, and 3-1. The Diamondbacks have scored a total of five runs in the last four games started by Wade Miley. Ground ball out and a strikeout. Miley's third, two down. Lowest run support average in Diamondbacks history with a minimum of 25 starts. Wade Miley right now tied with Javier Vasquez for the lowest run support average in franchise history. Talk about a thin margin for error. And when you're walking guys and giving up the occasional home run like Wade has this year, it makes it even harder. Yasmani Grandal. And a liner to end during Ciarte in left field that ended the first. Wade has been ahead in the count all night long. It's 0-2 right now. He's faced 13 batters, 11 first pitch strikes. And that's a formula for success combined with all the ground ball outs. And 
Working fast as always. More than 60% fastballs up there for Miley. 91 92. Generally split between the four seamer and the two seam sinking fastball. Slider more often. That one just eats up Grandal. Miley will take it himself. Spins and throws. And it's a quick inning. A 1 2 3 fourth for Miley. He's now retired eight in a row. He leads it 1 0. Our clubhouse is great. You know, the guys, you know, when they're at home, they make, really make you feel like you're part of the team. But, you know, at the same time, you're basically just a cheerleader, you know, and I've been that for, for two and a half years, and it's been rough. Uh, you know, luckily this, this organization has been first class and then, you know, taking care of me, making sure that, uh, you know, they, they knew that I, or I knew that they, I had their support. And, and uh, you know, it's just been a, been a long, long time coming, and, and I'm just happy to be here. Daniel Hudson with our Geico quote of the game and Huddy was on the sideline for a long long time coming back from not one but two Tommy John surgeries he was obviously ecstatic yesterday but he knows today he's got a very realistic chance of pitching in this game he told us yesterday that pitching yesterday was most likely not going to happen but there he is in the bullpen alongside Brad Ziegler uh, revved and ready to go his family is here his wife is a newborn daughter is here, so Huddy is ready to be more than a cheerleader, and everyone in d -back Nation anxious to have that right-hander back. Oh, boy, what a long road it's been, Brad. And Sarah and baby Baylor are here, waiting for the moment that the Hudson family has been anticipating for a couple of years now. Don't forget he was a 16-game winner as a starting pitcher on the Diamondbacks 2011 team as a 24-year-old. And now he's on the road to recovery after two Tommy Johns. And the plan for the rest of this year is to have him work out of the bullpen. One inning at a time make about a half dozen or so appearances before the end of this year. And then next year considering he's had two Tommy John surgeries in two years it might be best served to work as a reliever again but to, they'll test things out with him right now make the best guess they can as to what his role should be long term. He did not go as Marvin Hudson down at third. So Gregorius has it full three and two on Odrisamir Despagne. Who is now at 80 pitches through four plus 53 for strikes. Wade Miley has thrown only 39 pitches so far through four innings. He has been extremely efficient. Just worked an 11 pitch fourth. I would guess that moving forward with Daniel Hudson, a lot of it depends on the depth of the pitching staff and who the Diamondbacks may pursue in the offseason, see how that rotation shakes out for next year. Maybe he'll be better served being a relief pitcher, or if you don't get the kind of quality guys that you want for your rotation, uh, might have to consider stretching him out a little bit and putting him back in that rotation as DD takes a high call third strike right there. Doug Eddings rings up Gregorius, who was on his way to first base.
Wow. Come on, Doug. Third strikeout for Despagne. Edie had a pretty good beef there. Miley grounded out his first time. Here's that little 68 mile an hour curveball. Just for yucks. And comes back with a 90 mile an hour fastball that misses one and two. I guess the moral of the story with Doug Eddings behind the plate if you're going to miss, miss high. This was the pitch before that 68 mile an hour curveball, according to our pitch tracks, did not make it down into the zone. Nice play by Grandal there, who stops, spins, and throws to Despagne, covering for the second out. Yeah, if, it, if it's too high to make the pitch tracker thing, it's probably not a strike. Probably not. Just saying. And they're in Ciarte. No, and I don't want to get into the whole robot umpire thing calling oh, balls and go. strikes, but I mean here's a perfect example Didi Gregorius should have walked to start this inning now You've got the pitcher at the plate who can sacrifice bunny into scoring position for the top of the batting order But instead a bad pitch was called strike three Wade Miley has to swing away and now we have a one two three in. Bob Renly ladies and gentlemen Umpires what can you do what are you gonna do <laughs> one up in d back? Us who have the benefit on uh, of television and replays, it's a lot easier. And if you're the batter like Edie Gregorius was, you can have it explained to you. Yeah, Jordan Pacheco apparently was up in the clubhouse watching on TV and is describing to Edie where the pitch was in relation to that top upper quadrant of the strike zone. And uh, Edie says, "I know, I know, I was there." The box is here. The pitch was way up here. <laughs> it's always easier from up here. Wade Miley has retired eight straight Padres. He is rolling right now. And ahead of Rene Rivera, another strike one for Miley, who's been ahead of the count all night long. Rivera singled his first time up. Huh? Wade Miley, a five pitch second, a nine pitch third, an 11 pitch fourth. He's got six ground ball out so far and has struck out three. Rivera fists one the other way at Bay City's two for two. And Rene Rivera has really turned into a hitter. He's always a, a catch first catcher type guy, but he's had two hits now in well four straight games.
Brings up Reimer Liriano. Now, now I say four straight games. I don't count yesterday. Because somehow Rene Rivera walked four times in Monday series opener. Two were intentional. So technically he didn't have an at bat. Reimer Liriano sends that one down the right field line. Rivera takes the turn and heads for third. That one's in the corner. Glenn Hoffman going to stop him there. And Reimer Liriano, the rookie, with his second major league double. You see a pattern develop here in this inning. Rivera in a two strike count shoots the ball to right field. Liriano first pitch shoots the ball down the right field line. Yeah, they've kind of suspected that Wade Miley is going to be around the plate. He's proven that he's jumping ahead in the count. So they're going to be more aggressive and it looks like in this inning think about hitting the ball the other way. Well, Tim Stauffer has started throwing in their bullpen with the struggling. The pitcher spot is coming up a bit later in the inning. So uh, Bud Black if he. Wants going to give himself the option of hitting for Despagne. And Stauffer is throwing. There's strike one to Cameron Mabin, who grounded out his first time. Now it's that time of year. Bud Black has 13 relief pitchers available tonight. Get comfortable. Ooh. That's another rule that's going to be changed as we move forward in this game. How many players you can use after September 1st? I'm not a big fan of the whole expansion thing anyway. Uh, I was talking to Mark Grant, uh, the fine TV announcer for the Padres before the ball game, and uh, we were kind of in agreement that I have no problem with calling guys up from the minor leagues, but I think there should be a set limit on the number of players who are active on a given night. Mm -hmm. If you want to add three, four, five players, make it a 28, 29, or 30 man roster in September, and you can use those last five spots. However you choose you might want five relief pitchers tonight our bullpen's a little dinged up I'm going to use five guys off my taxi squad list as pitchers tonight you might want to use a pinch runner another a third catcher on the roster whatever the case may be and that could change on a daily basis but to have potentially 40 players available after you've played five months with 25 players just doesn't seem right in a pennant race. You saw Bud Black tell Odrisi Mayor Despagne to put the batting gloves on. The pitcher spot is due up next after Alexi Amarista. Tommy Medica is out there in the on deck circle, but Despagne is kind of standing by here. If the Padres don't get a run across and Miley gets out of this inning, maybe to go back out there and keep pitching. He's at 87 pitches right now for the ball game. 59 for strikes, but he is getting ready to hit, even though Medica is in his spot in the on deck circle. Really all depends on what Amarista does right here. Should he get a base hit and drive home those two runs, we might see the pitcher go ahead and take the at bat and stay in the ball game. If Amarista makes out, then they have a chance to score with Medica pinch hitting. I think uh, Despagne's evening would be over at that point. Bud Black's got everything lined up. His pitcher is warming out the bullpen. His other pitcher standing by. Everything in place. And Amarista drives down into left center field. Rivera scores to tie the game. They'll stop Liriano. And RBI for the Little Ninja. It's 1-1. Score tied. He's going to call back Medica and send Despagne up to take the at bat, more than likely to sacrifice Bunt Amarista on to second base. Down, dug that one out. That pitch looked to be below the knees on the outer third of the plate. Got just enough of it to get over the head of Didi Gregorius for an RBI base hit. Third hit in the inning for the Padres against Miley. So here is Odris and Air Despagne, who, as we showed you earlier, is a terrible hitter. <laughs> Just absolutely overmatched more often than not up there. Miley now at 50 pitches, 38 for strikes. And he gets the bunt down right back to the mound. Amarista moves up, and Despagne is retired. 1 4 on the sacrifice. 
That's only the second sacrifice bunt for Despagne this season. So you've got second and third, two outs, a run in, and the leadoff man, Yon Hervey Salarte, steps up. That's how quickly your fortunes can change as a starting pitcher. Tommy Medica was in the on deck circle, looked like he was going to take the at bat. And Marista gets the base hit to tie the game. Next thing you know, Despagne's up at the plate, putting down a bunt, and will stay in the ball game. And Tim Stauffer, who was out there warming up in the Padre bullpen, is now sitting down. has flied out and struck out. That one hits Glenn Hoffman at third. Right in the wallet. <laughs> he had a few of those that he played like that when he was a rookie shortstop for the Red Sox. Ouch. Yeah, a lot closer to home plate than he normally would be with a right-handed hitter at the plate. He kind of takes his lead down the line along with the runner the whole time keeping an eye on Jake Lamb to make sure he doesn't sneak in and try to pick the runner off third base. Bounce to first. Trumbo gets over there and makes a nice play to take it himself and keep it a 1 1 ball game. We are through five. We're all tied. Century Link, your link to what's next. Coming up for the Diamondbacks Cliff Pennington, David Peralta, and Mark Trumbo in the Arizona Six. Looking at fan photos, so tweet us your fan photo on the Twitter with the hashtag of the whole thing AZ fan photo for a chance to have your fan photo shown later in our game broadcast brought to you by AT&T. And I think the road trip for Leo Gilmartin is off to a pretty good start so far. There's Leo looking at some pictures now in the radio booth after his uh, epic fiasco in our fantasy football league draft last night, a, a moment that will live in infamy. For Leo Gilmartin, who had the number one pick overall. And there was a, well, let's call it a computer error. Yeah. Operator error is a more accurate. Leo uh, was all set to take the first pick, and, uh, you know, it's uh, one of those automated fantasy football drafts on one of the websites. It takes care of all the things for you. It's a great service. All you got to do is click the guy you want, and you draft him, and you move on. Well, it, there's a little clock there, and it ticks down, and you get 60 seconds to make your pick. And, and Leo was all set to take. Uh, McCoy from the Eagles really excited to get him and sure enough the draft started bang okay count it down 60 59 58 and Leo hits the old computer and nothing's happening uh -oh. and Tom Candiotti the commissioner is next to him and uh, Leo in a panic as this one goes over the mound here comes Amarista who makes a nice play to get Pennington. 
Leo, in her panic, said to Candy, pause the draft, pause the draft. <laughs> and uh, sure enough, his, his minute ran out, and he got, I don't want to say he got stuck with Adrian Peterson, but he ended up getting Adrian Peterson instead of LaShawn McCoy. And there's uh, Commissioner Man. Candy Audi, and look at Leo, he's still eyeing. He thinks Candy somehow rigged it so he would not be able to get LaShawn McCoy, and, and he may have something there. So the, the, C, the fantasy football season, B.B., is already off to a very controversial start. <laughs> it was a full-blown <laughs> panic last night. Leo's been waiting eight months to make that number one pick. All he had to do was click, select LaShawn McCoy. Nope. Well, I assume that after the first pick, all, all went smoothly the rest of the evening. Oh, no, he had he drafted a terrible team. Well, but <laughs> in terms of the computer, it worked fine. Yeah. Peralta rifles oh, that wow. one down the right field line. I think he just hit that gentleman, the security guy down there. Trying to protect himself with the chair and move the chair at the same time. Another bouncer over the mound. Here comes Amarista one more time. Peralta. Ooh. Corey Blazer says he's out. That was close. Well, Peralta limping a little bit after he hit the bag really hard down there at first base. Alan Trammell on the phone with Alan Campbell, the video coordinator. Let's have a look. And he's out. Yeah. Good call. Really jammed that right foot into the bag there. You can see him kind of hobbling, bent over, and immediately took that brace off the right foot and then limped a little bit as he headed back to that third base dugout. We'll keep an eye on that. Two outs now for Trumbo, who has singled and struck out. Alexi Amarista, the shortstop these days, with Everett Cabrera on the DL. Along with Carlos Quentin, Yonder Alonso, and a whole bunch of other Padres. It would look like it would be a very shaky outing for Odrisa Mayor Despagne, who in a laborious fourth is right now coming up on 100 pitches, and he's going to get through six in a 1-1 ball game. Cameron Maven has it, and that's the hitting. We are tied up in San Diego. on Fox Sports Arizona is brought to you in part by Lone Butte Casino. You're in for more winning moments at Lone Butte Casino. And by Cox Communications. Bundle and save with Cox. Nighttime in San Diego, California. Bottom six, Diamondbacks and Padres tied at one as 
Abraham Elmonte leads off the inning against Wade Miley. Elmonte, Jerko, Grandal, two, three, and four. One is pulled foul down the third baseline. Hey fans, FoxSportsArizona.com, all the online local sports you won't find anywhere else. You'll get reaction from the clubhouse here at Petco Park. Randy Hill on tonight's big WNBA elimination game. This is game three, Western Finals, Mercury and Lynx going on right now in downtown Phoenix. The wife is at that game. That is a biggie. Maya Moore in the Lynx against Diana Taurasi in the Mercury. And the Cardinals getting ready for the Monday night opener against the Chargers as El Monte the strikes out, five strikeouts for Miley. You can read all that at FoxSportsArizona.com. Ran into a bunch of people here in San Diego today. They're headed over to the Valley to catch that uh, Chargers Cardinals football game. They, now they just played. How dumb is this? They just played the last preseason game against each other. And now uh, they tee it up again about 10 days later. Jed Jerko. You are going to watch a lot of the NFL this year at all? Or? I'm going to watch a lot of the Cardinals. <laughs> you got tickets? I got season tickets. Yeah. Yes. Big Cardinal fan. Right to D.D. Gregorius. Another ground ball out for Miley. I like to make a day of it. Get over there early. And go to the red zone. Watch the out-of-town games on the big screens over there. And have a beverage or two before the game starts. That is a good setup out oh, there. Oh, it's great. Grandalo for two. After he had a couple of hits last night. Bearing down again, he had retired eight straight to end the fourth and gave up three base hits in the fifth when the Padres tied it up. And two quick outs here in the sixth. Mercury, by the way, are up 83 67 with five minutes to go. Trying to win the West. I already guaranteed a WNBA title. I remember that. Yeah. Yep. So far, so good. Broadway Burt <laughs> making the call. <laughs> Well, I get all the information from the wife. She's the WNBA expert. But uh, that is a good fun team to watch. Apparently the fantasy football expert as well. She is Coach EM. Well, conference call during the draft. A flare in the right center field. Peralta's over to cut it off, and Grandal has a two-out single. Yeah, she phoned in a bunch of picks. And I actually, I woke up this morning to a text from, how tricky is this? President and CEO Derek Hall texts me, wants to do a trade. Day after the draft, now I can't do this on my own. I gotta call the home office first, and <laughs> she nixed it quickly. Uh -huh. Not to it. So I had to text Derek back. Ah, I can't do it. Why don't you just have Derek call your wife? Well, pretty soon people are gonna catch on, and they'll just yeah. ignore me altogether. Yeah, just a figurehead. Kind of the way it goes. Here's Rivera, who's two for two. I also got a text from Derek Hall. You know, we were talking last night about all the Ohio University grads that are scattered around the major leagues and football and basketball and hockey. And how about us dropping a ball on that? One? Yeah, have that great sports ed graduate program there at Ohio University where Derek Hall went. Mm, my bad. <laughs> I knew that too. Just the intensity of that game last night, you know, this scrambled my brain. Three one ball game. One one here tonight game two of the four game set. Mentioned that game yesterday how Rivera somehow walked four times too intentional so technically he did not have it at bat. Four bases on balls he's just the ninth player in Padre history and the only catcher. Not to register an at bat in a game despite making at least four trips to the plate. It had been more than five years since the last time a Padre did that. And 
Rivera in there taking his cuts today already two hits. He has hit left hand pitching well this year a 260 average with five homers against lefties. And Miley runs it full three and two. Timer Liriano with good power on deck the rookie. 70 pitches for Miley, 49 for strikes. Jumped on that one. Shattered the bat in half, and it's foul. He's holding a toothpick right now. Try to squeeze this in real quick here, partner. This is another oddity in the game of baseball. Andrew Susak, is that how you pronounce the backup catcher for the Giants? Mm -hmm. S-U-S-A-C. Got his first major league hit as you get a look at this broken bat on Phantom Cam. He got his first major league hit on July 30th. Now, yesterday, the Giants were playing the resumption of a game from May 22nd. Susek wasn't even on the roster on May 22nd, but he got a hit yesterday in the eighth inning. So, according to the game logs, this is a back to the future move. His first major league hit came in a game when he wasn't even on the roster. <laughs> Go figure. Popped him up. Cliff Pennington out there in right center field. Oh, check the flux capacitor on that one, <laughs> Doc. <laughs> CenturyLink, your link to what's next as we head to the seventh in a 1 1 ball game. Miguel Montero leads it off. I look at our APS Energy All-Stars. The two starting pitchers, Wade Miley and Odrisa Mayer Despagne, each has allowed one earned run over six innings. A combined ten hits in the ball game. Miley so far with five strikeouts as we start the seventh inning. And Despagne, who looked like might come out of the ball game there for a while for a pinch hitter, got back out there, worked a one, two, three, sixth, and he's out there for the seventh in a pitcher's duel with Miley. It seems like our APS Energy All Stars lately have always been the pitchers. Offense has been pretty much non existent for the Diamondbacks, and uh, fortunately, they've gotten good enough pitching that the offense uh, for the opposition has been pretty non existent as well. Carsis and Vincent warming up in the Padre bullpen with Despagne nearing 100 pitches. Almonte in left has it. And that's eight in a row retired by Odrisa Mayor Despagne. Despagne played for a long time in Cuba with Industrialis, eight seasons with them in the Cuban League. Eventually played for the Cuban national team and last year defected while the team was playing in Europe. Signed by the Padres in May. And he's already pitched half a season in the big leagues. A couple of starts at double A, five starts at triple A, and he was up with San Diego. 
A.J. Pollock back with the Diamondbacks. So far 0 for 2. A.J. played 15 rehab games, most of them with AAA Reno. Didn't hit a ton, 8 for 49, couple of extra base hits. Boy, was he rolling when he got hurt. A no-brainer National League All-Star. Two and two, Despanier wanted that one long. Look back to Doug Eddings. See that funky arm slot he's got there. 103 pitches, 70 for strikes. 2 2 to Pollock. Air strike three. Four strikeouts for Despagne. Two down in the seventh. Seeing from Jake Lamb right now. We, we've talked about this a number of times, and every time it seems like Jake is kind of coming around and the strikeouts are going to go away, he gets a couple of knocks, and then it's right back to swinging a miss. It just seems like there's a certain rhythm and a certain timing that every hitter has. And the, and the idea is in your mind, you have to assume every pitch is going to be right down the middle of the plate, straight fastball, and be ready to swing at that pitch. And then if you see it's not what you're looking for, if it's in a location you can't handle, if it's a breaking ball, then you stop your swing. It looks to me like he's waiting to see the pitch, recognize the spin, guess the location, and only then does he think about starting his swing. And in most cases, it's way too late. It mm -hmm. just seems like he's really been tardy on some very hittable pitches. It seems like he's been 0-2 his entire life. It's At always easier to stop your swing than it is to try to start it quickly. I mean, that ball, you've got three-tenths of a second to react. So a lot of hitting coaches, and I always believe the same thing, you have to be ready to swing at every pitch and then stop your swing if you see it's not in the strike zone or it's not the pitch you're expecting. But if you wait to try to recognize the rotation, let's find the arm angle, find the release point, that ball's going to be by you before you can even start your swing, and that's what we've seen from Jake lately. Even when the pitch might be 87, 89, we're not talking about 98 mile an hour fastball. Bounces this one to second and backs up Jed Jerko, and Odrisa Mayor Despagne has retired 10 in a row. Stretch time at Petco in a 1 1 ball game. But uh, if you think back to the first game of the Rockies series at Chase Field against Christian Bergman, this guy's throwing his fastball 86-87 right by Jake Lamb. 
Now later in the ball game against Adam Adovino, a guy throwing 98 miles per hour, he quickens up his swing, get the bat to the ball as quickly as you can, and he ends up hitting a grand slam to the opposite field. I think because he was facing a harder thrower, he realized he had to make up his mind quickly, get the bat ready, be ready to attack that strike zone, and put a good quick swing on it and got great results. First two at bats, it looked like he was kind of waiting to see the pitch and then took a big swing and it just slowed everything down. It's a lot to think about up there. Oh, it really is. It really is. And at some point, you just you hear players talk about it all the time. Trust yourself. Trust your instincts. Trust that your hands are quick enough, that your eyes are quick enough, that your swing is good enough to hit major league pitching. He's land playing back. He can't make the bare hand play, and the rookie has himself a bunt single. Liriano two for three. And Liriano's got a lot of raw power, so you have to play back, and he just takes advantage. And dumps that ball perfectly down the third baseline. Jake Lamb tries to make the bare handed play. Liriano has a funny running style, but he covers a lot of ground in a hurry. Kind of reminds me of Raul Mondesi back in his days with the Dodgers. Came to the Diamondbacks late in his career. Had a very unusual running style, but was very fast. Yeah, they think he will eventually be a 2020 guy. 20 homers, 20 steals at this level. And now they got him hung up. Miley's already picked off one Padre base runner today, and there's number two. He picked off El Monte in the first one three six on the caught stealing here one down in the seventh. Oh, what a tremendous weapon and you wonder why more left handed pitchers don't work on that pickoff move and make it a weapon. I mean he's just taking the Padres out of a potentially big inning right here gives up the lead off bunt single and then quickly picks Liriano off first base one out nobody on. Cameron Maben waves at that one for strike one. Like we said, for rookies, a lot to think about. Mm -hmm. He's going to go into that clubhouse and smash a couple of water coolers <laughs> away from the cameras. Be back and ready to go. Here's Maben, who has grounded out and struck out. He's not hit a lot this year, 242. Only one homer, but uh, he's been an issue for the D-backs, sitting over 400 against Arizona this year. Coach Dave Roberts knows a thing or two about stealing a base. One big one in particular. Well, Miley, we've talked about the bases on balls, and now he had that six walk game in Washington. Walked four his last time out. It's been a non issue. Tonight, that's just his second walk of the ball game. And a, but another issue for Wade has been the lack of run support. Losses in the National League this year and starts allowing three or fewer runs. Miley has 13 of them. That puts him near the top on this list of hard luck starting pitchers. And then Marshall throwing out there with Mel Stottlemyre Jr. in the Diamondback bullpen. Alexi Amarista had an RBI single yesterday, had an RBI single tonight, his last time up. Pitcher spot is due up next, and Tommy Medica, who was out of the on deck circle earlier in the ball game before being recalled, is back out there. And this looks like it's it for Andres Amir Despagne, who threw 109 pitches and retired the last 10 he faced. There's a strike one and two. And Tommy Medica following the Todd Helton school of on deck hitters. He tries to get as close to home plate as he can to try to see the arm angle release point of Wade Miley before he goes up there to potentially take his at bat as a pinch hitter. 
And he needs to get all the looks he can these days. He is hitless in his last 21 at bats. Tommy Medica. Off Miley, slow roller to second. Pennington will have to hurry. They get Amarista as Maven moves to second. And we'll check on Wade Miley. And score that one, one, four, three on the put out. Boy, nice play by Cliff Pennington. He realized that enough time had elapsed that he had no time to spare. Just scoops and throws all in one motion, just in time to get Amarista at first base. About it all the time. Uh, infielders, all ball players for that matter, you've got that internal stopwatch. Once the ball is put into play, you know the speed of the runner at the plate. You know how far he has to run to reach first base, and that stopwatch starts in your mind. You can almost picture where the runner is going down that first baseline, and sometimes you have to alter your defensive play in order to get it over there as quickly as you can. Mike Carkey out to the mound to chat with Wade Miley as Tommy Medica steps up to hit for Despagne. Cameron Maben, the go ahead run at second and two outs in the seventh. Medica really scuffling right now. 0 for his last 21. 2 for his last 37. The batting average has dropped more than 40 points over his last 18 games. But he has been a tough out for the Diamondbacks this year. He is 9 for 20 against Arizona. And he's got some power. First pitch swing and is in the air. Right field corner, Peralta. And Miley strands the base runner. We are through seven in San Diego and we're still tied 1 1. As presented by Cox Communications and Fry's Food Stores is headed to Chase Field for the D-backs game on September 28th. And you can get on board by stopping by this month's participating Fry's Food Store in Flagstaff and enter to win two seats on the Fan Express bus to and from the game at Chase Field September 28th. For more information, visit FoxSportsArizona.com. Well, Wade Miley is getting pulled here in a 1-1 ball game, and he is not too happy about it. Chris Owings, just back from injury, is in the on-deck circle. Pitcher spot is due up second in this eighth inning, and that is it for Miley. 85 pitches, 58 for strikes. He threw strike one to 19 of the 27 he faced. He's given up just one run on seven hits. Walk two, struck out five, and that's it for Miley. Owings is going to make his return from that shoulder injury coming up right after D.D. Gregorius. New pitcher for the Padres on in relief of Odrisa Mayor Despagne is Nick Vincent. And we saw Vincent pitch last night, worked one inning through 11 pitches. Got two strikeouts. Got Pacheco and Ciarte to ground out and struck out Aaron Hill, worked a one, two, three, seventh. Miley is really, really grouchy. He wanted to keep going. 
Well, we saw Josh Colmenter pulled after what 81 pitches the other night at Chase Field. Miley done after 85, but it is a 1-1 ball game here in the eighth. You need some offense at some point. Tough call. Yeah, and for starting pitchers, uh, you know Wade Miley's now going to have to sit for four days or five days until his next turn to go out there and compete again. And uh, on the days they pitch, they they want to pitch until the ball game is over. So that's the attitude you want from your starting pitchers anyway. We mentioned the Diamondbacks coming into tonight had scored a total of five runs in the last four games started by Miley. And they've scored only one for him here tonight. Petey lifts that in the air to left field. Almonte has it. And that will get a long and overdue look at Chris Owens. Chris Owings back for the first time tonight since June 25th, the left shoulder injury that cost him all of July and August. And at the time he was injured, Owings was second only to the Reds' Billy Hamilton in hits among National League rookies. 277, six homers. He was driving the ball, looked terrific. But that left shoulder strain cost him two months. Mentioned among rookies, uh, Chris Owings was off to a tremendous start through June 25th. He ranked second in average, first in slugging, first in OPS, and second in runs. And he was nearly 100 points ahead of Billy Hamilton in OPS. He was named National League Rookie of the Month for April this year. Bounces this to shortstop. Amarist has been busy down there. I throw, but Grandal has it two down. Now 12 straight retired by Padre pitchers two down for Ender in Ciarte. Trying to find a place to sit and simmer. In Ciarte 0 for 3. Had a pair of singles yesterday in the ball game also stole the base. About rookies ender right now, third among all National League rookies in hits. He trails only Billy Hamilton of the Reds and the Padres on Harvey Solarte, who played half his season with the Yankees. David Peralta right behind in Ciarte on that list. On the ground at Jerko. A one, two, three, eighth for Nick Vincent. Wade Miley's night ends here, still tied at one.
four game set here at Petco Park tomorrow. Diamondback Live pregame show coming your way at 6.30 on Fox Sports Arizona. Josh Colmenter for the D-backs who's been so good lately. And Andrew Kashner for the Padres. And pitcher for the Diamondbacks to open up the home half of the eighth is the rookie right-hander Evan Marshall. Padres in check here, making his 46th appearance of the season. ERA sits just a tick over three on the year, averaging better than a strikeout per inning. And he'll work to the top of the Padre order. Solarte, Almonte, Jerko, one, two, and three. Seven hits for San Diego, four for Arizona. One, one as we start the home half of the eighth with Don Hervey Solarte. Solarte tonight over three. He has hit in seven of his last nine games acquired from the Yankees in the Chase Headley deal July 22nd. And Abraham El Monte will be next. Solarte the switch hitter will uh, flip around and bat left handed against Marshall. He's about 30 points better from the right hand side, but this left hand side is his power side. He's got nine homers, seven from the left hand side, and he bangs that into center for a leadoff single. Go ahead and run the board with nobody out to open up the eighth. Our Chaz Roberts air conditioning cool play of the game with Abraham El Monte coming up. Some of the pickoffs. In fact, we've had three of them in the ball game. Yeah, David Peralta by the D-backs. Almonte by the Padres, picked off by Wade Miley, and then Reimer Liriano caught leaning the wrong way by Wade Miley. Jazz Roberts air conditioning, cool plays of the game. Solarte aboard for El Monte, who shows bunt, and it's foul. Abraham El Monte, 23 games with the Padres since he was picked up from the Mariners in the Kristen Orphea deal. He walked in the first before he was picked off, 0 for 2, struck out his last time up. He's hit safely in six of his last seven games. Jake Lamb will stay in on the grass at third. Trumbo holding Solarte aboard at first. Again, it's a bunt, and once again, it's foul. So Ramonte cannot get the bunt down. It's 0 2. We hear catchers talk about pitchers trying to be too fine. Look like Almonte is trying to be a little bit too fine with that sack bunt. You just want to get it into fair territory. Try to keep it away from the pitcher if at all possible. His form is good. Just tries to angle it too much down that first baseline, and both attempts have gone into foul territory. A switch hitter as well, and much better from the right hand side. Drives that to right field. Peralta drops in front. Solarte takes off and heads for third. Here's the throw, and it's not in time. Padres have runners on the corners with no outs to open up the eighth. Way too good of a pitch on an 0-2 count. A sinker up over the middle of the plate. Almonte bangs toward that gap in right center. David Peralta's throw to third. Air mailed everybody. Nice play by Jake Lamb to recognize they had no play at third base. Come off the bag, get that throw, and hold the runner at first. And now the batter is Jed Jerko. You've got Solarte at third, Almonte at first. Nobody out. Jerko singled in the first. He's one for three. Coming off a two hit game yesterday. Jerko just a couple of weeks ago got his 100th career RBI, becoming the fastest player in Padres history to get to 100 RBIs. Game number 199 for him. Swing and a miss, 0 and 1. And a 
big RBI spot right here. Oliver Perez, the left-hander, will start heating up. and a strike. Turco has been a productive bat lately. 31 games since he came back from that plantar fasciitis. 21 RBIs in those 31 games since he returned from the DL. And he's an aggressive hitter up there who will strike out a lot. Marshall back even two and two. And Jerko will expand his own strike zone with regularity. Chases the slider down low and away that time. And Jerko stands a little farther off the plate than a lot of hitters do and ends up reaching for a lot of pitches on that outer third. Like that. And very susceptible to sliders like that down and away. Anything down and away and he strikes out. Now if Marshall can get ground ball here maybe wiggle off the hook. That outside corner of the plate, he showed him one pitch inside, number three, way off the plate inside, just to make him aware, and then right back away again to get him out. Mike Harkey out to talk to Evan Marshall as Yasmani Grandal will step in, the switch hitter. Now they've had Oliver Perez warming out there. I don't know how quickly Ollie can heat up, but Grandal. Is a much better hitter from the left hand side. We've mentioned that. He's got all 11 of his home runs this season as a left hand hitter, including four since the All Star break. So then you go to Perez here and flip him around. But it looks like Marshall is going to get Grandal. Perhaps the thinking is Marshall more of a ground ball pitcher, Ollie Perez more of a swing and miss fly ball pitcher. I'm going to stick with the sinker baller and hope that uh, Grandal grounds one right at one of the infielders. Chance for the double play. Grandal came up as a catcher playing first base tonight, but not a whole lot of foot speed. So it's first and third, one out. Grandal singled his last time up, one for three. Lamb will play even with a bag at third. All one. Grandall set up in that left handed batter's box looks a little bit like Ichiro. He kind of points the bat out toward the mound and puts his left hand up on his right shoulder as he's waiting for Evan Marshall to deliver the next pitch. We'll get to it here eventually, right there. And that's exactly what Ichiro does. Mark Trumbo, too. On the other side. Rondal is not a great hitter from either side either way. He's at 211 on the year, but this is definitely where he's got all his pop. Major League average 51%. Grandal trying to get that run home from third is at 33%. Salarte, the runner at third. El Monte is at first. That used to have a real big front leg kick, one of those timing deals that he's tried to get rid of, and it's made him a little quicker up there, but it's also caused the mechanics to get out of whack from time to time.
Two and two. Randall's also coming off a gruesome knee injury. Surgically repaired right knee, so he stands a little bit taller in that box, trying to take the pressure off that knee. Not so much of a crouch as he used to have. Pretty much straight up there. And Marshall strikes him out. Two big strikeouts for the rookie right-hander, and now he's one out away from getting out of this mess. A series of heavy, heavy sinkers on the outside part of the plate. Evan Marshall comes back with a hard slider, starts it in the middle of the plate, breaks it down and in right underneath the bat of Grandall. Now he's got to get Rene Rivera, who's been a problem in this series. On base four times with four walks yesterday. He's got two singles and a run scored tonight. A single by Solarte, a single by El Monte, sending Solarte to third. But Marshall has bounced back to strike out Jerko and Grandal, and now here's Rivera, the catcher. Ball one. Rivera hit under 220 in the first half of the season, but he has found his bat here lately. Hitting over 300 since the All-Star break, including three homers. with runners in scoring position. Marshall trying to keep this game tied up and get us to the ninth. With Solarte at third and El Monte at first. 1-1 one, one, to Rene Rivera. He's a strike away. What a hard slider from Evan Marshall at 87 miles an hour. Guy throws a heavy sinker in the low to mid 90s, bearing in on you as a right handed hitter. See that slider, it's hard not to swing at it. That one ends up in the dirt. Nice stop by Miggy. Trying to pull off a Houdini act right here. Him out. Evan Marshall gives up two base hits to open up the inning and then strikes out the side. He got Jerko. He got Grandal and he gets Rivera to strand two and keep it a 1 1 ball game as we go to the ninth. Century Link, your link to what's next. Pennington, Peralta, Trumbo still tied in Sandy. Up in the bottom of the eighth inning there after giving up back-to-back -back singles to start that inning. 
He was like Houdini. Jajurko, swing and a miss. Yasmani Grandal, same thing. And then finally Rene Rivera as he wriggles off the hook. And I'll tell you what, there was some great energy in that D-backs dugout after he came off. That bench was kind of on their heels when they thought this thing was starting to slip away. But Marshall comes through and... Uh, Nice to see, gentlemen. d back still in this one. Well, you can get a long way, Brad, with stuff and guts, and the rookie right-hander showed plenty of both right there as Kevin Quackenbush, the closer, comes on. Uh, working at home in a tie game, he'll be out there for the ninth. Quackenbush got the save last night, or yesterday, I should say. Struck out the side in order. One, two, three, got Lamb, Reimold, and Gregorius, and he's back out there for the second night in a row. Another factor for Evan Marshall, uh, his willingness to throw that slider down in the dirt, low and away when he was ahead in the count. He trusted Miguel Montero's not going to let that ball get by with a runner at third base. He's able to smother a couple of those sliders in the dirt. Evan Marshall striking out the side after giving up back to back hits to start the inning. He's, look at him, he's still, that adrenaline is going, man. He can't even sit down. Brad Ziegler warming up back there. Kevin Quackenbush, the closer these days. Strikes out Pennington. That's 14 straight retired by Padre pitchers. The Diamondbacks have not had a base hit since Miguel Montero's RBI single with one out in the fourth. They got only four hits in the ball game, nine for the Padres. Here's Peralta who singled in the fourth inning. He's one for three. TNT fan photo all queued up anxious to see if uh, Leo Gilmartin can follow up his great success from yesterday. It's probably a picture of Adrian Peterson. <laughs> that would be funny. Pause the draft. Pause the draft. <laughs> Peralta with a single in the fourth is now hit in five straight and 14 of 60. He's got himself another base hit. Dunks it in front of Lariano in right field. A one-out base runner in the ninth. Let's see how Leo did. The member of the Brendley Committee on this road trip. Time for our AT&T fan photo. Thanks to all of you who tweeted in your pictures to Leo. With the Twitter and the hashtag and the whole thing. And Leo tonight has selected Ooh. the Luchador mask. Mm -hmm. That's Wait. always a big one. I got to tell you, Leo's done a pretty good job. I'm surprised. Especially considering all the distractions, all the other things he's had to deal with recently. Pulled the uh, luchador with the glasses on the outside of the mask. That's a nice touch. Nice picture from Ron, and uh, well done by Leo Gilmartin. He's kind of sort of slowly working himself into the good graces of the Brendley Committee. Our Trumbo singled in the second, one for three. Bush has rolled a couple of nice curveballs up there already in this inning of work, and we saw Mark Trumbo take a Despagne curveball earlier in the ball game and blast it foul down that third baseline. Love to see Quackenbush hang one more breaking ball over that inside part of the plate. I've seen Mark go to left field a whole often, we a whole lot lately. We've talked about how other teams are playing him more to hit the ball to right. Which he's been content to do for his base hits and take his walks when he can. Padres are in there, no doubles defense in the outfield. David Peralta, the runner over there at first base, uh, so I'm sure he's well aware of that. Dave McKay has pointed out the fact that the Padres are playing deep, so should Trumbo roll one through the infield, a routine base hit, Peralta should be able to go first to third. And look at Almonte in left field. He's almost standing on the warning track out there. Here's the strike, one and one. 
I mean, you can't play any deeper than Abraham El Monte is right now in left. You have to be sitting in the seats. There he is. Got to buy a ticket if you play any deeper. One and two now. Anderson Reed has joined Brad Ziegler. One guy in case you get the lead, another guy in case you don't. Mark since August 1st, hitting an even 300. 16 RBIs in 28 games, and on base percentage since the beginning of August, that's over 390. We'll tap her back to the mound, Quackenbush. The backhand stop and throw is high. Grandal gets it down, and Peralta moves up. Fans follow every D backs game through season's end with the MLB.com at bat app, number one app for live baseball on your smartphone or tablet. You'll get live look ins, replay reviews, score stats, a live uh, radio broadcast. MLB.tv game of the day and a whole lot more. Download at that on the App Store or visit dbacks.com slash mobile today. Well, here's an RBI chance for Miguel Montero. They're not going to give it up to him, though. They're going to walk him and work to A.J. Pollock, who's on deck. Mickey has been a thorn in the Padre side all season long. He's got the single in the fourth that produced the only Diamondback run so far. And Miggy now with 12 RBIs in 14 games against the Padres. First base open, he'll get the free pass, and they'll work to A.J. Pollock. One previous at bat for A.J. against Quackenbush. That resulted in a home run. No work. This is just a percentage move here. Walk the left-handed batter, sets up a potential force play at any base on the infield, and gets the righty-on-righty -righty matchup that Bud Black would much prefer in this situation. Now you've got A.J. back tonight for the first time in three months. He's got Peralta at second. Montero at first and two down. And he struck out looking his last time up against Odrisa Mayor de Spagna. Well, a chance for A.J. to make it a fairly dramatic return here. Two on, two out, one one in the ninth. And now the outfield, as opposed to being back in that no doubles defense, will creep in. Trying to cut down that runner at home, Peralta, on a base hit to the in, uh, to the outfield. Where Almonte is now compared to where he was standing before. And maybe in right center field as well in as well. He did not go Corey Blazer down at first. Two and oh. Back to May 26. This was a pretty favorable matchup, as you mentioned, Bob, for A.J. Pollock against Kevin Quackenbush. This was only a few days before he got hit by that Cueto fastball. And he took Quackenbush deep for a game winner. 3-0. This was Pollock and Quackenbush round one back in May. The walk-off. Yeah, high fastball. AJ tomahawked it to just to the right of straightaway center. Three O's in there first strike. Part of that stretch where he was just playing so well right before he got hurt. A 39 game stretch during which he was hitting 359 and slugging over 650. Popped him up. Very shallow right center field. Cameron Mabin. 
And that's the inning. Diamondback strand two will go to the home half of the night. Here comes Brad Ziegler in a 1 1 ball game. MLB doubleheader beginning with the Giants and the Tigers. Both teams trying to maintain their postseason spots or get there. And then the Royals and Yankees in a game you can see only on Fox Sports 1. All begins Saturday, 9.30 on Fox. Continues at 1 on Fox Sports 1. And streams live on Fox Sports Go. We go to the bottom of the ninth. And Reimer Liriano will lead it off against the new Diamondback pitcher. Brad Ziegler. Liriano is a young rookie, 23 years old. He has got raw power. His first big league home run was in this ballpark. As you look at Ziegler's numbers, his 67th appearance of the year. And when Liriano got a hold of his first one in just his eighth major league plate appearance, he did not miss it. He hit it up into the third deck of the Western Metal Supply Company out there, just below the restaurant that's on the roof there in the left field corner. They measured this at 427, and that is way up there. That was his first major league home run in just his eighth big league plate appearance, and that is a shot. Right up there underneath the metal in Western Metal Supply Company. So you got to be careful with this kid. He's got two hits tonight, doubled in the fifth and singled his last time up. Came into the ball game three for his last 25, but he's two for three. Ori Spangenberg, the rookie who made his major league debut yesterday, is out in the on deck circle. He would hit for Cameron Maben. Ziegler ahead 0 and 2. Is there one away? Had him played perfectly that time. Shaded over a little bit toward the right field line and shallow in right field. Brad Ziegler threw a slider on that outside part of the plate, even though Liriano hit it well, hit it right into the teeth of the defense. Well, here's the guy that uh, yesterday they were calling Span the Man. Corey Spangenberg. His first major league ball game yesterday, his first career hit was a two run single in the fifth. And he pulls this one down the right field line and gone. Padres win it. Well, if you thought he was a hero yesterday in San Diego, He's an icon tonight. 2 1. Padres take this one. Corey Spangenberg, his first major league homer, is a walk off winner.
first round pick by the Padres in the draft three years ago. The 10th player selected in that draft overall. He went ahead of some big names like Sonny Gray, Jose Fernandez, George Springer. His big league debut yesterday, he had the big hit, a two-run single in the fifth, and his first major league homer wins it for San Diego. That goes without saying his first pinch hit at bat of his career, but he's obviously been paying attention to pinch hitters. They swing at that first pitch in the strike zone. Brad Ziegler left the sinker up over the inside part of the plate, and Spangenberg wastes no time. Line drive homer into that Petco porch area out there in right field. Our Gila River game summary. Diamondbacks with only five hits, ten for the Padres, the biggest of which was that tenth. Corey Spangenberg's walk-off winner in just his second major league game. And the Padres have taken the first two games of this four-game series. And here comes the bucket. Another hard luck uh, effort for Wade Miley, who pitched a really, really good ball game, but just could not get any run support. And the Padres have taken the first two of this four-game set. We will be back with more from Petco Park in San Diego right after this. Corey Spangenberg, a pinch-hit walk-off homer, wins it 2-1.